Self-study is one of those things that is extremely rewarding. Anytime you learn anything on your own, it really stays with you for the rest of your life. I still remember all of the things that I've taught myself and they make me feel good about myself. And I'm kind of like proud about it. I feel good about myself for learning those things. You know, I taught myself how to program in C before going to college. I taught myself field theory while in graduate school. And I actually taught myself about conic sections on my own because I never learned about ellipses or hyperbolas. And, and we all have stories like this. We all have things we've taught ourselves. And maybe you don't have that story yet. But in this video, I'm going to give you two tips for creating that story because there's basically two ways you can self-study. We're going to start this video by talking about the way that most people self-study. And I don't want to say that it's not effective, but I do want to say that it's the easy way. Let's take this for example. Let, let's say that you want to learn some algebra that you're rusty on. Maybe you, you took some algebra classes in the past and you have to take calculus or you're taking calculus and you feel like your algebra is rusty. And that makes sense because in a calculus class, it's really about the algebra, right? If you have strong algebra skills, you're probably gonna do well in calculus. So a common scenario that I would experience is students would come to my office every single semester and they would say to me, hey, I'm having a really hard time in your class. I understand everything. It makes sense. You know, you're a great teacher. But when I'm trying to do things on my own, when I go home and I try to do the homework, I just have a hard time with the algebra. I keep making silly mistakes. Do you think it's a good idea for me to go back and review my algebra skills? And I would definitely say yes, right? I, I do think it's a good idea. But let's think about that approach. It's the easy way. It's the easy way out. And it's, it's a good way. You definitely want to make sure you have strong algebra skills if you're going to be taking a calculus class. In any class, you want to make sure you have, you know, a really good foundation. You know, the Fields Medal winner Terrence Tao has been quoted for saying, and I'm paraphrasing here, that one of the reasons he is so good at mathematics is because he had a really strong foundation. So having a strong foundation is important. So using self-study as a way to review old material is a good thing, right? It's, it's a good thing. And, and using self-study as a way to learn material that's new and relatively easy is also a good thing because it's rewarding and you feel good. And a lot of mathematics is about reward. So that's, that's the first way to self-study. It's to basically review old material, you know, learn easy things on your own, you know, pick up an old algebra book and review that math that you've forgotten from 20 years ago. That's what excites people. And I, and I certainly think that's a good way to do it. So if you're watching this video and, and you're thinking, oh, it's, it's, it's not good. I shouldn't go back and review. You should. It's good. It'll make you feel good. It'll build your confidence. It'll make your foundation better. But you're not going to take it to the next level if you don't push. You need to push through your comfort zones in order to take it to the next level. So what do I mean by that? If you're trying to learn calculus, you have to learn calculus. You actually have to study calculus. So I didn't tell you the other, the other part of that story. When students would come to my office and they would tell me that they were struggling with algebra in my calculus class, I would really put the emphasis on the fact that they should also learn calculus. You know, make sure to actually focus on what we do in class because that's going to affect your grade. So if you're in a calculus class, right, and your algebra is weak and you decide to, you know, go home and just work on algebra all day, you're going to fail your calculus test, right? Because you didn't do any calculus. Why? Because it's easier to go back and review. That's the easy way out. It's easier to go back and go over your old trig notes than it is to learn what you're supposed to learn. You have to push through your comfort zones in order to learn. And it makes sense, right? It makes sense. Math is hard. And in order to learn new math, you have to struggle. You have to embrace that struggle and push through those comfort zones. And it really shows that it's hard, right? It's hard to push through those comfort zones because every single time someone is struggling with something, they always think, oh, maybe I should go back and review my weaknesses so when I re-attack the problem that I'm trying to learn, it'll be easier. And again, I'm not saying it's a bad strategy, but I'm mainly making this video as a reminder that if you're trying to learn functional analysis, you should be studying functional analysis, right? If you're trying to become a better runner, you should be running. If you're trying to get better at basketball, you need to play basketball, right? So work on the thing that you're trying to do. 
one thing that's really interesting that I think I should share is if you're trying to become something, if you're trying to become good at something, you need to be thinking about that thing. And mathematics is a good example. You know, if, if you're trying to become good at mathematics, you need to be always thinking about mathematics, working on it on a daily basis, making it part of your life, watching math videos, reading math books, doing math problems. The more that you surround yourself with what you're trying to learn, the closer you will become to becoming that thing. It's really about visualization. You know, if, if you think someday I'm going to be a mathematician or someday I want to be a computer scientist or someday I'm going to be really good at calculus. Let's just go back to calculus. Then if you think about calculus and if you embrace it and if you focus on it, you're going to be good at that thing. You know, the, the power of the mind is, is really strong. And, and I think that when you encounter hard things in mathematics, if you focus on them, if you embrace them, and if you make them part of your life on a daily basis, it's going to make a big difference in your learning ability. So don't forget to push, right? It's really, really important to push yourself. Again, it's really easy to fall back and say, oh, I want to go and review my old notes because it's fun. And again, I'm not saying it's bad, but don't forget to push yourself through those comfort zones. You need to get out of your comfort zone in order to grow. Right? You're never going to get to the next level. I'll use another example because this is a really, really good one. And this one's a little bit painful for people to hear, but I'm going to go ahead and say it because it's true. So if you're, if you're thinking about being a math major, like say you want to study mathematics in college, the biggest barrier you're going to have is pushing through your comfort zone and learning how to write proofs. That's going to be the biggest hurdle you're going to have. You know, because, because once you learn how to write proofs, once you push through that hurdle, you're going to get better. And, and, and learning to write proofs isn't like a one-step thing. You don't just take a proof writing class and, oh, I know how to write proofs. You know, you take a proof writing class, you learn the basic structures of proofs, and then you start tackling these new topics. You start learning linear algebra. You start learning number theory. You start learning abstract algebra, topology, advanced calculus, aka real analysis. You, you start learning these different areas of math and you start applying those basic proof techniques to those different areas. And that's how you grow and that's how you increase your proof skills. But you still need that foundational math, right? You still need that, that easy proof writing skill. And that alone, that alone is a big hurdle. It's, it's something that requires people to push through their comfort zone. Because up until that point, you know, up until you get to proof writing and mathematics, everything is somewhat easy, right? Everything is computational. You can do a thousand integrals and you're going to be really, really good at integrals but you're not going to know how to write a single proof. Why? Because you never push yourself past the comfort zone. You never took it to the next level and started writing proofs. If you look at videos on YouTube, here's a really good example. If you look at like popular math videos on YouTube, like math videos, videos where people actually do math, all of the popular videos are not proof, but they're not proof based. They're, they're rarely proof based. Why? Because most people can't relate to proof-based mathematics, right? Most people don't know how to write proofs. You can get really, really good at solving tricky math problems, right? Without ever knowing how to write a proof. Why? Because learning how to write proofs requires that you take it to the next level. You have to push through that comfort zone, right? It's, it's not easy. It's not easy. So if you're doing self-study and you're thinking about going back and reviewing your notes, you should do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't, right? I'm not, I don't want to knock that. I think that it's important to go back. It's important to review. It's awesome. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. I, I want to go back. I want to pick up a book and just start doing integrals now, right? And I might. I, I probably will after this video. I'm just going to knock out like five integrals. Yeah, it's just a good way to start the day. But it's important to push through your comfort zones. Don't forget that. So how do you learn calculus? I was talking about calculus. So let me just show you a quick book I have here. This is a book that Richard Feynman used to learn calculus. It's called Calculus for the Practical Man, and it's part of the Mathematics for Self-Study series. This is an older edition, and it smells like an old comic book. I just got to give it a whiff here. Oh, it smells like my old Spider-Man comic books that I used to have. Yeah, really nice. So this book is great because it has answers to all of the problems, and it's also written for self-study. So it's like a really old book. It's written by Thompson, and it's written in a way such that a person can buy this book and start using it to learn on their own. Now, there's a lot of modern books today that might be better than this one, but I think this is a classic and it's worth picking up. I'll leave a link in the description to this book in case you want to check it out. 
it's a really cool book and a really fun book. If you want to learn to write proofs, there's a bunch of books you can get. There's a free one called Book of Proof on the internet. You can just Google it or you can buy it. Or there's this one here. I really like this one. This is one that I always recommend now because I kind of felt like I felt like I was pressured to buy it because <laughs> people kept leaving comments about this book and I did not want to buy it. I resisted. I kept reading the comments and I'm like, yeah, I'll check it out. Thanks for thanks for the recommendation. I'm like, I don't know if I want to spend the money, you know, and I bought it and I'm really glad I did. This book has beautiful explanations. It's a good size. It's not too big. It's written by Velman. It's called How to Prove It, A Structured Approach. It's not the most inexpensive book. I mean, it's probably going to cost, I'm pretty sure I paid more than 20 bucks for this book, but it's worth it. It has clean explanations. And what's good about it is it starts with logic. You know, all proof-based books start with logic because all of mathematics, you know, the proofs are based on logic. They're all logical arguments, but it quickly jumps to informal proofs. So, you know, proofs, the way people write proofs, like it will show you how to write proofs like a human being does. It's not just going to focus on the logic, right? It's not just an entire logic book. It's going to jump quickly to actual paragraph style proofs. At the same time, it's going to really like reiterate the logic and talk about the logic in those proofs. So it'll really help you make the transition from, you know, working with the logical symbols to working with words. And I think Velman does a wonderful job at that. And I'll leave links to this book and this book in the description of this video in case you want to check them out. So yeah, self-study is key. Remember, it's okay to go back and review old topics when you're when you're trying to learn something. And, and again, in calculus, algebra is the hardest thing. But if you're trying to learn calculus, you should do calculus. If, if you're trying to learn to write proofs, you should learn to write proofs, right? Focus on what you're trying to do. Make it a part of your, you know, your daily life. Think about it. Embrace it. You know, read math books. Do math problems. Watch math videos. You know, it's better if you're obsessed, but try to make it a daily habit. I think that's the most important thing. Also, before I forget, I do have a Patreon. Um, I'm trying to pump it. So if you found value in this content, consider, you know, uh, supporting me on Patreon. I also have an Instagram. It's really, really fun. I need to post more on there. I think I'm going to post some stuff today. I like Instagram because I can post anything. It's Instagram. Who cares, right? It's just fun. Uh, and plus, I, I like the music. The Instagram music is really cool. Anyways, keep struggling. Keep doing math. Push past your comfort zone. Good luck. Now go do some math.